The issue here today is that we are taking away the public's right to choose what they do based on flimsy and uncertain evidence. We don't know the extent to which this new variant will escape the vaccines. We don't know how harmful it would be. Um, and this, though, goes to the heart of the nature of the society that we are creating. The Honourable Lady for the Liberal Democrats was talking about the harm principle earlier, and I entirely endorse the idea that our liberties should be constrained by the harm that we do. But again, in an intervention, my uh, right honourable friend for Orchard and Sale West made the point about flu. Now that we have got the case fatality rate down to a comparable level to flu, we should be living with coronavirus like we live with flu. And again, my right honourable friend made the point, are we going to manage other diseases like this? The point that really I want to flesh out is this. The government's approach seems to be to say, better safe than sorry. You can't be too careful. The trouble is you can be too careful. You really can be too careful. There is a problem which I would call tunnel vision, which my uh, friend Professor Paul Dolan from the LSE calls situational blindness. We end up looking only at the disease. We've already heard brilliantly set out by my honourable friend from Winchester the harm that will be done to children. I can't begin to understand what the harm will be to children psychologically of being uh, in masks all the time, what that will be, and you can't, you can't go back and repeat the experience of a nativity play mist, and, and so on and so on. Um, the economic cost of the coming pandemic will be, I think, um, huge, uh, and we only saw on the front page of the Telegraph today, fleshed out in the business section, the problems that um, Virgin Atlantic will have. This is the problem. If the government keeps going down this path in these circumstances where, as my right honourable friend from Forrester Dean said, the disease is going to be endemic and we have to learn to live with it. If we panic every time there's a new variant, when there will be new variant after new variant, we are going to make entire sections of our society uninvestable. Things like airlines and hospitality and tourism, many of the things which give us joy which give us hope, which give us something to look forward to. And that is a key point. Where's the hope from, from the government? I know young people who are demoralised and depressed and have been telling me that we would go back into lockdown. And I've been saying no because the vaccines are working and I don't believe that Conservative ministers will do this to us. But now we've already started to see the scope creep, the mission creep, the goalposts perhaps being slightly unshackled from the ground, ready to be moved. Yeah, free spirits with a soul. People who deserve the dignity of choice and the meaning in our lives which comes from taking responsibility. It's possible that meaning in our lives comes from little else. This is a fundamental choice, I would say, between heading towards heaven and heading towards hell. If we continue to react to these fears and uncertainties by taking the authoritarian course without impact assessments, because they're only temporary, you know, then we are embarked on that downward course. The public are not fools. We're not here to govern idiots. I have faith in the British public. I have faith that they can choose for themselves to do the right thing, to wear a mask when it's sensible, to pay attention to the level of cases, to choose for themselves whether or not they go to a restaurant, and so on and so on. Indeed, to choose whether they go and visit vulnerable relations in care homes. Well, there's a sad story I could tell about that.